Growing everywhere from sidewalk cracks to seaside rocks, the humble plantain has many virtues, its utility ranging from acute first aid situations to chronic conditions. Best of all, if you know how to spot it, you can most likely find this plant whenever you need it. Various species of plantain are native to Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Americas. In North America, the most commonly found species comes from Europe. Plantain loves disturbed soils and can even grow in hard-packed earth with lots of foot traffic. When European settlers brought the seeds to North America, they spread so readily via horses' hooves and wagon wheels headed west that plantain was commonly called white man's footprint. I took this photo of plantain in the streets of Edinburgh, Scotland. You could spend a lot of time trying to memorize plantain's medicinal applications, but you will have a deeper understanding of its abilities when you view it through the lens of its energetic properties. Plantain is energetically cooling and excels when used to counteract hot conditions such as redness, or sometimes yellowness, sharp pain, swelling, inflammation, or simply feeling overheated. Burns are an obvious example of a hot condition as the burned area feels warm to the touch and turns red. A red, hot, itchy rash is another example. A fresh plantain poultice can soothe burns and rashes by both pulling out the heat and healing the damaged tissue. Plantain may be most famous for its ability to soothe painful insect bites and stings. It's used to treat bee stings and even to counteract the venom from spider bites. I've seen this work again and again on many types of bites and stings. For best results, apply a plantain leaf poultice as quickly as possible after the sting and change the poultice every 20 minutes or when it feels warm to the touch. A plantain salve will also work well, especially on common itchy insect bites like those from flies and mosquitoes. I also like it as a fresh herb infused into a salve and I often combine it with other lovely plants like self heal and yarrow. Plantain leaf can heal the mucous membranes of the digestive tract. A strong plantain leaf infusion or tea can be one of the most dramatic healers for inflammatory digestive problems, including intestinal permeability or leaky gut, ulcers, and inflammatory bowel diseases. In this situation, plantain soothes the inflamed tissues, helps to heal the tissues as a vulnerary, prevents bacterial overgrowth, antimicrobial, and can seemingly knit those tissues back together again as an astringent. It can also heal the upper digestive tract. For example, it can relieve the pain of canker sores and speed up the healing of the affected tissues. It's also a nice tea for people who have acid reflux as it can soothe and heal the tissues of the esophagus. I like it as a tea combined with calendula flowers and rose petals. The seeds are mucilaginous and high in fiber. Seeds from Plantago ovatum and Plantago psyllium are sold as psyllium seed and husk, which are used to maintain bowel regularity. Psyllium is the basis for the Metamucil brand name. The seeds from Plantago major, Plantago rugelii, and Plantago lanceolata can be used similarly, but the process of harvesting enough of those teeny tiny seeds is very time consuming. You know that type of dry, hacking cough that seems endless and can be oh so very painful? The one you typically get at the end of a cold or flu or from inhaling small particles like dust or smoke? Well, plantain soothes hot, dry, and spasmodic coughs. It moistens the lungs and cools the heat, thus relieving the irritation causing the cough. I love it as a tea for soothing these types of coughs. Plantain thrives in areas with human disturbance, from hiking trails to parking lots. There are many species of plantain that can be used similarly. Commonly used species include Plantago major with the egg-shaped leaves and Plantago lanceolata with lance or arrow-shaped leaves. Generally speaking, plantain has basal leaves that are simple with conspicuous parallel veins. If you tear a leaf, you'll see that the veins look like these white strings similar to celery. Arising from the leafy base are slender, leafless stalks with a cylindrical spike of inconspicuous white, green, or yellow flowers. The flowers mature into tiny egg-shaped capsules that contain the seeds. Insects that feed on the leaves, buds, and flowers include grasshoppers, flea beetles, and moth and butterfly caterpillars. 
Mammals such as squirrels, rabbits, groundhogs, and deer eat the flower spikes. The seeds are eaten by birds and small mammals like mice and squirrels. Animals, including people, help disperse the seeds, which can stick to feet and fur. Plantain also has potential for phytoremediation. For example, researchers have studied the ability of Plantago major to accumulate lead as well as pesticides in contaminated soil and water with promising results. How to harvest plantain? Well, the leaves may be gathered at any time during the growing season. If you plan to eat them, they are most palatable when they're young. If using them for medicine, they are likely to be more potent before the plant has flowered and gone to seed. You can use your fingers to pluck the leaves at the base, although the stringy veins can sometimes be hard to break, so scissors can be handy. You can harvest the seeds after they have turned brown or black. You cut off the stalk and then shake the seeds into a bag. Plantain is pollinated by wind and generally doesn't need our help to thrive. As long as you let the plant develop flowers and seeds, it should reproduce easily. So how to work with plantain? Well, the young plantain leaves are nutrient dense and considered edible, but they are admittedly not always palatable. Depending on the plant, they can be quite bitter. We've chopped them up finely and added them to salads and stir fries. They can also be blanched first to remove some of the bitterness. Young leaves are best. As the leaves get older, the strings within them get tougher and more difficult to eat. The seeds are also edible and they don't have a lot of flavor. They can be eaten raw or added cooked to foods or whole plantain seed stalks can be steamed and eaten if you find it too tedious to collect the seeds. Fresh plantain is best for addressing wounds, burns, bites, and stings. A poultice can be made by mashing the fresh leaves in a mortar and pestle or simply chewing up a wad of leaves to make a spit poultice. To make an oil infusion, let the leaves wilt overnight before infusing them. We prefer fresh leaves when making an alcohol extract. Dried plantain works well for teas and sitz baths. In terms of special considerations, plantain is regarded as safe and there are no common allergies or adverse effects associated with its use. In our book, Wild Remedies, you'll find recipes for wild and weedy shampoo and body wash, as well as a healing digestive tea. Plantain is a ubiquitous weed that offers many healing gifts. Reach for it for acute painful situations like bug bites, or rely on it to heal chronic coughs or digestive issues. This weedy wonder is well worth getting to know. <laughs>